another Game Nexus fan review. Today we'll be looking at Thunder Fox for the Taito F2 arcade system. This game was released in 1990. It was also released on the Sega Genesis in Japan and the US, and it also made it to the PlayStation 2 and Xbox, as well as the PC for the Taito Legends collection. That was your cool little intro showing the two guys you get to play as. Let's get right into this. This game is a side-scrolling action game where you're this dude and you basically have to knife all the enemies. You get power-ups on occasion, but your main weapon, of course, is this this knife here. Just get a gas can right in their face. And then I get this cool, awesome fire bazooka. Wait, get the, get the fire bazooka, it's better. It's only a temporary weapon, but hey, it's fun. Gotta like shooting people with fire. That's what we need more in life. More fire flamethrowers. They're just fun. Ah, these guys just scream so generically. That's just funny. Seems like the flamethrower doesn't work as well in the rain. And then it went away. This is one weird thing. See this little ledge up here? If I jump up here. It falls down and I get a hundred, uh, I get a thousand points. I find that the weirdest thing in this game, that falling off a ledge gets you points. Here's a jeep, this is a really cool part of the game, get his grenade, grenades are good. Strangely enough, pushing different buttons makes the gun shoot different ways instead of using your control pad for that, since the jeep basically drives automatically. But it's kind of cool, they can just run over all these dudes and, yeah, that kind of ruins their day. Oh crap, I'm throwing all my grenades. You can get a gun as well, like this gun here, but all that is is a single shot. Plus we'll be needing this grenade for the upcoming boss battle. This is one of the things I like in this game, how uh, he can do this flip kick like Guile does. That's what I first saw, thought of when I saw that, I was thinking... Oh wow, he's just like Guile. Although he does sound he does sound pretty pathetic when he dies. It's like oh! Now we gotta destroy the tank, and this is one of the easiest to destroy tanks in video game history if you don't get blown away from it. Just gotta grenade it. Get the grenade from the dude that died, grenade it again. Wait for another dude to pop up. Try to knife him in the head so he'll give you another grenade. Grenade it again. It's the most ineffective tank, too. It's even got that cool little skull on the top so the enemies can say that they're really cool. You know, because skulls make you cool. And it's all dead now. So now our hero will walk away as the, as the uh, points tick up and go into his awesomely awesome hovercraft vehicle, which, you know, we were totally expecting from this army dude. Now on to stage two. We gotta destroy the air fortress, but first we're gonna do some side-scrolling horizontal shooting action here. Nothing to get too excited over, it's pretty generic if you ask me, it's just kind of one of those things where like, okay, they probably got pretty tired knifing all those guys in the last level, so let's give them something different for at least a few moments, and let's let them shoot these hovercraft guys in these fluorescent green hovercrafts. I mean, what were the bad guys thinking? Fluorescent green hovercrafts? I mean, no, we're not gonna, we're not gonna stick out much in the air in these very bright vehicles. Time to insert another coin. Virtual coin. I kind of like how old the technology was pretty modern, and then you have these hovercrafts, and it like totally takes it into the sci-fi direction. Now we turn all big again, and it's time to get out of the hovercraft. There you go, get out of the hovercraft. And now it's time to do some more knifing. Now our guys look a little different, but they're the same kind of idea. Love how he does that guile kick. And he whines so much when he dies. I always notice that in games, characters always whine when they die. I mean, this guy looks so macho, you think he would just be like, Okay, I died. But I got more lives, so I'm gonna come back. And of course, all these guys look exactly the same, just like the previous level, but at least they're different guys, I gotta give them credit there. 
I still find it funny. Look, look at when he's slashing. It kind of looks like he's holding, he's slashing with the knife, and he's holding one at his waist at the same time. Okay, now it's time to destroy this stupid thing. And this thing, you basically gotta poke the guy in the head until... And try not to get killed much, but then again, we're playing an arcade game on an emulator, so... It's not like we have to worry about coins. But I'd imagine if you played any of the console versions, you don't only really have limited lives, so you might have to worry then. Die. But yeah, this is definitely... This is definitely a pretty cool game here. The action isn't the most complex I've ever seen, and look, I just fell out the window. The action isn't the most complex I've ever seen. It Honestly, I think it could be better. But, it's a decent action game, and uh, definitely give it a try if you're really into action games, if you're really into, like, army shirtless men games where they have one guy against the whole army. So I definitely say it's definitely worth a look, but it might not give you much long play in the long run, really. So, that's been another main review. I'm Game Master 14. And there's one more thing I wanted to say. I just want to congratulate Magus for getting... for getting, uh, 200 subscribers. That's really cool for him, and, uh... Good luck to you, man. Later on.